Bonjour mes amis et bienvenue à la question de la semaine ici à Professional Photography Tips. Mon nom est Joshua Cripps et vous pouvez trouver moi à Instagram et Facebook à Joshua Cripps Photography. <laughs> Sorry for all the French speakers out there who are laughing at me right now. Anyway, uh, this week's question comes to us from Dean Coco. And Dean has a great question that we run into all the time. He writes, in outdoor photography, how do you successfully photograph, let's say a creek or a river when it is in a narrow canyon that is dark when the sky is bright? You want to show the sky so you can give the viewer the sense that you are in a narrow canyon, but the sky has a tendency to be overexposed or the creek underexposed. The, the idea is to give the viewer of the photograph the sense of the location you are in, yet show the beauty of the rushing water at the bottom of the photo. So this is a super duper question because it hits at the heart of one of the biggest issues with landscape photography, which is controlling dynamic range. Your eye is incredible at capturing detail all the way from the brightest part of the scene down to the darkest part. Your camera though is much less good at it. In fact, the best cameras, the best DSLRs on the market today usually can capture about 14, 14.5 stops of dynamic range. And I've seen it said that your eye is about 22 stops of dynamic range. So that is a massive difference there because stops are a logarithmic scale. So what can you do in this situation? Well, I tend to favor two different techniques. The first one is exposure blending. This is where you take a photo that properly exposes the sky portion of your frame and a separate photo that properly exposes the creek and the canyon walls portion of your frame. Then you can bring those together in Photoshop to get a final image that contains both the detail from the sky and the ground. And if you're curious about how to do that, I have a super in-depth course about that exact subject. You can check it out in the show notes below or the link above. The second technique, if you don't want to learn exposure blending or if it seems like too much work for you, is simple. You can do this in a single exposure. And what you want to do is you want to bias your exposure to capture all the detail in the highlights. So digital cameras are really amazing about pulling details out of the shadows and they're terrible about pulling details out of the highlights. So if you have to choose between one or two of those in the field, you definitely wanna pick the highlights. What that's gonna let you do is you have a, you'll have an exposure that has all the detail in the highlights and even if the photo looks super duper dark, when you bring it into post, you're gonna be able to pull out an insane amount of detail in the shadows. Trust me, it's absolutely insane what you can do in post these days. So what I like to say is expose for the highlights, then recover the shadows. So just keep that mantra in your mind. Now, one problem that you might run into in that situation is if you expose for the sky, you're likely gonna have a very fast shutter speed because you want an instantaneous photo that only lets in a little bit of light. That means that any flowing water you've got in these creeks is gonna be frozen in place. Now, if you wanna get that smooth flowing look to your water, you're gonna need to find a way to increase your shutter speed without blowing out your sky. Now, the easiest way to do this is to slap a strong neutral density filter over the front of your camera, something like a six stop filter or a 10 stop filter. That's gonna let you get a good exposure for your sky still at longer and longer shutter speeds that when you bring out those shadows in post are gonna show that flowing movement to the water. So I hope that helps answer your question there, Dean. It's a super common problem in landscape photography. So hopefully everybody out there is getting some good help from that. As always, thanks for watching. If you have a question you'd like to see answered here on Pro Photo Tips, you can submit it via this link. And if you'd like to have more free photo tips and gear reviews, inspiring photos and more, you can check out the Pro Photo Tips newsletter. Now, if you'd like to see even more in-depth photography and post-processing tutorials, head on over to the Nature Photography Academy. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.